for part two now. And you'll notice that I have the exact same picture up that I had before. We're actually ready to do problem number two now. If, however, you check out problem number two on the example problem sheet, you'll discover it is almost the same thing except they put a twist to it. And that's exactly what I wanted you to see is that sometimes the problems can be presented in different ways. This time, the farmer in problem number one liked his three new cattle pens, so he decided to build another one along the same design. However, he wants to be sure to enclose 303,750 square feet of area. Yes, he's very exact. He will have to buy more fencing this time, and he knows that he wants to use fencing on the outside of the fence that costs a dollar per foot, but the fencing on the inside of the fence will only be 50 cents per foot. And wants to know what dimension should he use this time to minimize his cost. That is a key feature we are going to see on many of these problems, and that is why the business world uses optimization probably more than any other calculus topic, because they want to minimize their cost or they want to maximize their profit. That's what business is all about. So in our case, since they want to minimize cost, our function must be cost. Whatever they want to minimize or maximize, that is your function. So we have to figure out an expression for how much is it going to cost you. Well, it depends on whether it's a length or a width. It said he was going to have to pay $1 per foot for the ex exterior fences. So, okay, how long will the exterior fences be? Well, there'll be two L's plus two W's times the one dollar. Then he's going to pay 50 cents per foot for the interior fences. Well, how long will the interior fences be? Just two W's. Now, that will definitely clean up here if we do a little simplifying. That's really just 2L plus 2W. 50 cents times 2 is going to actually leave us with another 1W. So in reality, we end up with 2 Ls plus 3W. There's our cost function. Now, do I need a second function? Yes, or not. I shouldn't say a second function. Do I need a second equation? Yes, you do. you got two variables. So I need that equation that limits us from making an infinitely sized fenced in area. What's limiting us? What number did they give us in this problem that affects it? Well, it was that lovely 303,750 square feet. That's how much area this thing has to contain. So we know then the area has to equal that number. And how do you calculate area? Yes, good old basic length times width. So in this case, the length times width is out there equal to the number. Okay, I need to get this thing turned into one variable. In this case, your choice, do you want to solve for L or W? And where it's going to be the exact same situation, it really doesn't matter. In my case, I'm going to do whatever I actually have to work on the paper for, because that way I can use my numbers as I go on down the page. So as I look here, I'm checking out. We're going to do it all in W, so therefore we need to solve for L. And so in solving for L, I'm just simply dividing W over to the other side. And I'm now going to come substitute that in in place of L over here. And then I'm going to simplify that. And if I take that all times 2, I'm going to get 607,500 over W plus 3w. And that is my function all in one variable. That's my original function right there. Now, what do I need to do before I proceed on? Except everybody and their dog forgets. Yes, you need to create that interval. It's easier to stop now before you get all involved in the calculus and remember that, oh, i got to have the interval. Okay, is the interval going to be for L or for W? Well, in this case, since we have W's in our problem, we're writing an interval for W. So once again, how low can it go? Well, the smallest it could be, it'd be as close to zero as it can get without being zero. Now, 
how big it can be is trickier this time. What equation do I look at that helps me figure that out? Do I look at the function or do I look at the equation equal to a number? And the answer is yes, the one equal to the number. That's what limits us. Okay, once again, if you want to find out how big W can get, you have to let L get small. So you are once again asking yourself, if I let L go to zero, how big will W be? Well, how can I do that? If I let L go to zero, I can't divide by zero. That doesn't work. So you have to think about it. If, if L got to be 0 0.00001, how big would W be? W would have to be really, really, really huge to come out to 3,750 feet. So it actually turns out when L goes to zero in this case, W is going to infinity. This baby is getting huge. And here's the kind of a little side tip of the day. If you notice that your variables are multiplied here equal to a number. You can kind of save yourself a little trouble when your variables are multiplied equal to a number. Your interval will end up being zero to infinity nearly every time. Unless there's some special situation in the problem. But basically, you can plan on that happening. So we expect this one to be 0 to infinity. Okay, now, proceeding on with the calculus. I got the interval. Now I need the critical point. So how do I do the derivative of this? Well, this also causes some issue. I could do a product rule, which would be insane. A lot of work. I can just bring w up as w to the negative 1 power. So if I do the derivative, I'll have 607,500 w to the negative 2, which I will drop back down as w squared. And of course, the derivative of 3w is 3. That's what I need to set equal to 0 and solve. In this case, I'm going to leave the 3 on the left side and move the uh, fraction over so I can make it positive. And I don't want a fraction, so I'm going to times by w squared to get rid of the fraction, which will leave me with 3w squared equals 607,500. Okay, what's up next? Well, yep, i got to divide by 3. And so if I cheat here, I get 202,500. And then, truly miraculously, I need to square root this puppy. And when I do that, you will discover that that is an exact square root, and W turns out to be 450. That's pretty amazing, and of course nothing here was rigged in any way. Now, do I know that's my answer? Nope. Is there probably an 80% chance that's my answer? Yep. But we don't know until we actually go through the process of verifying it's an absolute maximum. So, do I do limits here? Or can I just sub all the numbers in the function and see which one's the highest? Well, since it's bra or excuse me, parentheses, yes, I have to do limits. Which function am I doing the limit on? The starred one, back over here, our original function. All right, now, next question is, what do I get when I let this limit go to zero? I'll have 607,500 over zero. That's a number over zero. And you better remember how you do a limit when you have a number over zero? Yes, you test the one-sided limit. In our case, it would have to be the right side because our interval runs on the right side of zero. In which case, we're going to get a positive. So it actually means we get positive infinity. If I put 0 and 3w, I'll get 0, which means my result is positive infinity. If I got a positive infinity, that means I'm not ever going to get an absolute maximum because this thing is going up forever. Then I want an absolute maximum. 
The answer is no, I didn't. I wanted an absolute minimum, so that's fine. There's no maximum. Who cares? Now I need to do the limit on the other end. I need to do the limit as we go to infinity. Okay, well, w what do I know the limit is as if I put 607,500 divided by infinity? We know that goes to zero. Three times infinity is infinity. And so I get another infinity here. All I have to do is prove that my critical point comes out less than infinity to have a minimum. So I'm simply going to put my critical point in the function and if I put it in the original function, once again, I'm cheating, I get 2,700. So did that come out less than infinity? Yes, that is my absolute minimum. Now the question is, what does is, what is 2,700 mean? Well, since I put it in my cost function, that's telling me the cost. It's going to cost the farmer $2,700 to make this fence. I know the width should be 450 feet. I do also still need to know the length because it wanted dimensions. Where should I go get that length? Back to the equation where you had L equal up here in the top right corner. We knew L was 303,750 divided by W, which in this case is 450. And if I divide that in there, I will get 675. So I have now determined my final result here is I need a length of 675 feet by a width of 450 feet in order to minimize my cost, but yet get all the fencing in. All right, are we having fun yet? Yes, you can see that these do take quite a bit of work. Consequently, it's not very many problems per day in most cases, nor will there be a whole lot of problems on your test. All right, let's move on to a couple other examples. We may not work some of these all the way out. I'm about to hit another, actually I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it right now before I start in this next problem.